What's going on guys? Kevin is here and I am excited uh, for those of you who are joining me for this week's installment. This is episode one of my YouTube show, KL Experience, and I figured a good place for us to start um, on the first official um, episode is talking a little bit about the piano here and kind of discussing and sharing with you guys a little bit about my um, musical journey and kind of where I was many years ago, decades ago actually, and kind of how I got to where I am today and what my plans are for the future. I want to start off by kind of saying that many, many years ago, I'm 32 years old right now, so many years ago, probably when I was um, six or seven or eight, somewhere in that ballpark, um, is when I kind of discovered, or I should probably say my parents discovered, um, that I was able to play music by air. So what does that mean when you hear play by air? It means that if I just come up with a, a random melody right now in my head and I sing or hum that melody, I can then pretty quickly replicate it on the piano. So let me let me give you an example of what that means. So if I do a melody, let's rock with that, all right? Yeah, there we go. It's, Anyway, I can hear something and I can replicate the, the melody um, pretty quickly, as you just saw. And that was something that I was able to do for many years ago, and I, I showed an interest in playing, um, in playing the piano at an early age. So my dad and mom um, decided to sign me up for piano lessons. So in sixth grade, I remember this pretty well, actually in sixth grade, shortly after us moving to Jersey from New York, my, um, my parents signed me up for piano lessons. And the whole goal with that was, okay, you can play by ear, but what about being able to read music? And that was, you know, once you can bridge those two things together, as we'll talk more about in the future, um, th those are two very, very powerful things. You oftentimes have people who can do one and not the other. Um, but once you're able to do both, then it's it's it opens up a lot of doors, right? So I took piano lessons um, for several months, and it was things were going well. I actually had a recital, and I remember, of course, being nervous for that first time playing in front of people. But I think I did relatively well. I'm, I'm pretty sure my, my parents did record it, and I don't know exactly where it's at. That might be something worth uncovering for one of these future videos uh, and, and sharing my very first recital. But, uh, but yeah, so I took the lessons, and I remember... This was in sixth grade, and then when summer rolled around is when um, I asked my dad if I could take the summer off and join back in the fall, and I never did. So we took the summer off and never signed back. Aww. And so when people ask, you know, what are, what are the biggest regrets or anything, I don't really live by that mantra of having regrets and stuff, but I can certainly say that um, that it, I would have liked to have, not regretful, but would have liked to have stuck with the piano. Um, but granted, if I stuck with it at that age, things would have been, things could have been very different for me, um, for better or for worse, right? Maybe I would have shown such an inclination there where I wouldn't have been able to uh, do some of the other things that I've done, engineering and stuff like that. So who knows what the future would have held, but I, I stopped piano lessons, and for years I had that sort of thing kind of festering. I, I've always had an interest in getting back into music. Um, so we so we talk about sixth grade, so I don't know if 11 or 12 years old or something like that. And I remember for my I think 16th birthday, my dad uh, my dad knew that I wanted to get back into the music thing and, and even kind of producing a little bit. That's something that I was always interested in. So he said, okay, Kev, you know, we'll go to Guitar Center. We went there together. He said, if you, if you want to put up half the money, I'll put up the other half. And he wanted me to show him how serious I was about, about this, but he basically went half with me on getting a Yamaha Motif ES6 keyboard, which was my first... Um, real tank of a keyboard and you know anyone out there watching this who knows about um, anything related to music production has most likely heard of the Yamaha Motif ES6 and I use that thing a lot not so much for practice and piano but just making beats on there sticking my USB thumb drive in there having my brother or sister come in or my parents say hey check this beat out and then you know getting their feedback and stuff like that but never ever was I comfortable sharing it with people or have I shared it with other people outside of like that sort of immediate circle so I made a ton of stuff on there back in the day a lot of lot of stuff that kind of came and went you know I spent a few years and then kind of put it away and stopped using that for several years 
And then approaching my 30th birthday is when I really wanted to get back into everything related to music. That is the piano as well as um, production and things like that. And so that's kind of what got me to where I am today, which is signing up for piano lessons, investing in a, in a nice digital piano. And we'll talk about this. This is the Yamaha uh, P515. And it came out about a year and a half ago. And so it's a relatively new keyboard, uh, digital piano. Looks really nice, I think. Kind of like a nice furniture piece, you know, with the sides and everything. I don't know how much you can see there. But yeah, I love this thing. Built-in speakers and maybe almost as important as uh, having built-in speakers is the headphone jack here. So when I'm kind of inspired and I want to work on stuff at night, but I'm married and I have a wife that I need to respect and not and not blast music and things like that, I can come down here and I can pop in my headphones and I can just get into a zone, which I love. So that's kind of what got me to, to where I am today, right? I actually took about a year of piano lessons. I, I took a step back from that, sort of temporarily, but I'm definitely gonna be getting back into that um, very soon. I just kind of started teaching and things were a little bit too hectic at, at the time, so I'm definitely gonna excited to get back into that very soon. Um, but without the lessons, I've still been really, really into kind of practicing the things that my piano instructor has taught me. I still have a ton of material that she's provided for me, so I've still been going through these ex finger exercises and all that kind of stuff. And it's going really well. It's going really well. So uh, that's kind of where I wanted to where I wanted to kind of end at today. And just again say thank you guys so much for um, for joining, for watching this episode of, of the KL Experience. And if you have any questions at all, feel free to drop any questions or comments or anything right in the comment section below. I'd love to engage with you guys on that. And don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you like what you see. If you want to see more videos and click the notification bell, that way you can be notified when new videos come out. And I figured I would end with a... Um, Actually, one more quick little story. So I'm working on classical and jazz pieces mostly as of late, and my wife had an awesome idea, and my wife had an awesome idea, and my wife had an awesome idea. Uh, she said, Kevin, why don't you think, why don't you maybe learn some other songs that are more familiar for people? And I'm like, you know what? That's an awesome idea. So I, I learned, um, a couple more known songs and then you go online and it's not necessarily the best way to learn I prefer working through a sheet music or a lead sheet when we'll talk about those a little bit the difference between those and things in a, in a future video very soon but there's stuff on YouTube where you can get the chords associated with every song the way that this individual person would kind of mention how to how they would play the chords and again there's multiple play, ways to play a C chord this way uh, how else can you play a C chord? Inverted this way or that way. So those are all C chords, different versions of it. They sound a little different, as I'm sure you can hear. Um, so yeah, so so going back to the story, um, I'm in the process of learning, teaching myself by the by YouTube or by any means um, more familiar songs. So to that point, I figured a really good first place to start. Um, for one of the songs that I is very important to my wife and I is the this our first dance song So we got married two and a half years ago going on three years this May and our first dance song I'm not gonna say what it is I'm gonna play it and for anyone that has a good ear I would like to see if you could uh, let me know what song is this what are these chords? I'm not gonna sing or hum anything uh, But I just want to see what, how, how good you guys how sharp you guys are with this. Okay, so let's see up at the end there but um that's okay that's i'm still practicing still learning but yeah so what, what song is that anyone know let me know in the comments below all right thanks so much um don't forget to subscribe and i will see you guys next week all right take care